Hi everyone, thanks for having me so much. Um, I'm Max, I'm a yeah, kind of an urban geographer from Berlin, and I used to work with the transfer geography department at the Humboldt University, um, but now I'm like active in many bicycling initiatives and projects in Berlin, such as Radbahn, Volksenscheid Fahrrad, or um, Velo concept. And the following research um, was conducted for a master thesis, like within the last three years, and it's about the bicycle yeah, becoming a symbol lifestyle and status. So when everything like really started with a really basic and daily observation, that like, bicycles are getting more and more present both in media and in the urban landscape, and that the bicycles being used are somewhat more stylish and minimalistic, and like, often road bikes or even fixed gears, and that people using them, they wear messenger bags or like cycling caps and locks like as accessoires. And to, to describe those people, you can say that they are more urban hipsters than bicycling messengers. So, like, taking this observation as a starting point, I try to figure out three main questions. Like, the first one regarding this change or this development. So, how did the fixed gear bike and the messenger style like, become an object of popular urban culture? The second one, focusing more on all the examples I, could have collect, I, could, uh, I had collected from media and everyday life, and that focus on aesthetic and representative manifestation of cycling in cities. And the third one, and I don't want to focus on that today, um, because I'm not sure about that, it's like the effect of the interpretation, like what societal consequences this trend that we might have. So like for a method, I conducted media analysis and ethnographic observations, like mainly in Berlin, and um, I did try to do is like a systemization of all the examples I had collected from both media and everyday life, and they try to understand the semiotic system. And then I was forced to do some kind of contextualization or geographic specialization, because when I realized like, all the examples I had collected are either from Europe or North America. So it's like, it depends on the cities. Um, so for a theoretical background, I tried to focus both on social and cultural studies and an urban and mobility-based research and all of you know that the use of the bicycle depends on so many different factors. Like let it be infrastructure, um, density, distances, or just experience the day of the weather is <laughs> kind of an issue as well, or the mud. Um, so, but it's also about like, perceived safety and about like, perceptions and views that people and society have towards bicycling or not. And this somehow shows like, the expression um, how the bicycle is like, kind of normalized as a a proper mode of transport in everyday life. So we have so many different places, like cities, Amsterdam and Copenhagen, the bicycle is used like, to get around in everyday life and nobody's questioning that. In some cities in like, China or Africa, it's being stigmatized as like, a transport mode of the poor. And in other post-industrial areas, it's more and more getting a practice of the rich again. And these are kind of motives that um, facilitate the distinction, identification, lifestyle, instead of over rational ones. So like Götz and Omar, they say, there's always a symbolic dimension to where and how one moves, which in turn demonstrates one's affinity to a particular lifestyle group. Um, so my empirical work on this change, I focus on the fixed gear bike, or the one gear, like in general, and the single speak is as well relevant. So like first fixed gear bikes, what they call track bikes as well, they were like originally designed to be used in races like the Japanese Kevin or the Six Days on a bicycle track. So like for a really, really long time, nobody would ever think about riding fixed gear on the streets because it was considered like suicide <laughs> in a way. And then in the 1980s, the people from the Caribbean working as bicycling messengers in the US East Coast, they started using fixed bigger bikes. They were used to do it in their home countries and slowly more and more messengers adapted. Like fixed gear bikes, they were really cheap, they were light, fast, they were easy to maintain and nothing could get stolen. So there were always there were like some practical points on why to use a fixed gear. But of course you can like ask yourself, like riding fixed gear in the dense traffic like of Manhattan, brakeless, so it's, of course it's some kind of statement. Um, it shows your skill, like you pull over the machine, and of course it's punk rock in a way. So it's always some kind of like, like lifestyle and, and, and showing your identification with the work as a messenger. And this can be the same for the messenger bag. Of course, 
it's used and necessary to safely carry the, uh, to transport the packages from A to B. But of course, it always works as a sign, like showing your lifestyle, your status, your work as a messenger. And now, in the early 2000s, um, like fixing your bikes in the messenger style, they become popular, uh, popular in the urban cultures. So Mark Rice, he did some, some um, research about hipsters and he's saying that the fixed gear bike now ranks as the second most visible mark of hip, next to slim fit jeans. Mm -hmm. So the hipster that like, dress like messengers in the US and ride with the fixies, so they're called um, dressengers, posengers, fakingers, or hipster <laughs> messengers. So of course it's some kind of cooptation. This takes the symbols and the belongings of the messenger subcultures to show off and gain distinction themselves. And they, the hipsters are like a really key persons in this whole process because, of course, the aim is to look for distinctions and eventually find them, but they make it like commercially relevant for a bigger part of society and consumer culture. Like they act as trendsetters, like people adapt their style, and they're most likely to work in media and cultural industries for themselves. So this is how business started doing what they're doing. On the one hand, you can buy um, one gear at Walmart or Amazon for like 200 bucks. They're like really cheaply produced and standardized, but they come like in tons of different colors, like adapting to your style and your taste. So there's this German brand, it's called Einzig. They just started a few years ago. Their marketing slogan is, be a part of the movement, and then showing like pictures of young girls and boys like riding on the fixed gear bikes. And um, there's a lot of, whole, um, lot of reselling, recycling, and kind of upcycling too. So you'll find like, books or internet blogs telling you how to turn your old like, racing bike into a, a fixed gear. And people will pay like up to hundreds of euros for like a special Campagnolo super record seat post if it's like the right model from the right time. So it gets really expensive for all stuff. <coughs> and you have many manufacturers popping up, like main, especially in Berlin, there's so many of them like producing customized or handmade, um, somehow like highly expensive um, fixed gear bikes. Um, yeah, I hope I just made my point clear as so we find to fixed gears. But if you look at other examples of urban cycling cultures, there's the, the same trend. Like the publications, there's so many um, books, blogs, print magazines, or even movies that are coming up focusing on some topics of urban cycling. So you have this one Hollywood movie, it's called Premium Rush. It's, it's a really bad movie, but it has like an <laughs> interesting hint because it uses like a bicycle messenger. He's played by um, Joseph gordon lewitt and he's somehow getting involved in criminal issues and getting in trouble and have to like fight the evil guys. But he's doing it also on his fixed gear bike, like, riding like crazy through the streets and getting chased and doing stunts and stuff. So like the, the bicycle messenger becomes the hero of the film and the, yeah, the fixed gear or the bicycle becomes his tool, like the equivalent of a fast car um, somehow. Um, yeah, of course you have many innovations in bicycle industries. Um, but I just want to give you one reading about wall holders. Um, like most people normally store their bike yeah, outside on the streets, in the backyard, basement, on the garage. Uh, but now more and more people are taking their bikes back home and like hanging like paintings on the wall. <laughs> so it, <laughs> these wall holders like here, the only purpose is yeah, to make your room and your bike look good. And of course this can be weird read in as high esteem, like in different ways. Like first, it's made for nice and light bikes only, you really want to uh, decorate your room with. Second, like the bike, some are better maintained and yeah, safer than on the open street. And third, like a deeper sociological kind of sense, it's, yeah, it fulfills a certain yeah, prestigious function because it's hanging on a spot which is normally reserved for like emotionally precious family pictures, for band posters or for um, yeah, modern art, so the, the way people decide to express themselves. Um, then the urban cycling cultures are somehow social. There's so many events going on. There'll be trade fairs, exhibitions, um, critical mass, bike rides, elicates, races, so much stuff. And they're like bicycle shops. They're not only like a bicycle shop with a repair shop anymore, would have like an integrated bookstore, an integrated <coughs> cinema, a restaurant, or like a cafe. So like places people like to hang around and gather. And there are many connections between cycling and fashion and advertising and art. And this is not new at all, but it also always shows like societal negotiation processes. 
to like any fashion brand I looked up, let it be Gucci or Chanel or like Vans and Nike, they just had like their own customized bike made in the last few years. And like Puma, they really tried to get into this all US messenger scene um, to yeah, kind of the Sipsa messengers here. Um, these trends seem to play a substantive role in getting more people interested in biking overall, which is an achievement unto itself and one that speaks to the profound role the culture plays in the reproduction of transportation norms. Thank you very much.